Danas govorimo o tome da sinoć smo u stvari rekli malo da samo prođemo kroz sinoćnju temu. Just to summarize quickly what we covered yesterday last night. Rekli smo da Bog zna da si samo grešnik, da smo mi svi grešnici. God knows that all of us are just sinners. I to zbog one zlokobne koalicije između tri elementa, zakon, telo i greh. Because of the, the evil coalition between the law, the body and sin. Zakon je što jako dobro i jako sveto. The law is very good. It is holy, very holy. Ali koristi telo, naše slabo telo, but it uses our weak body da donese greh i smrt to bring death uh, because of sin. Zato u Pavlovoj teologiji kaže zakon ubija. And this is why Paul in his theology says the law kills. Čak ima jedan stih koji kaže zakon promoviše greh. There, there's even a verse that says that uh, the law promotes sin. Ako je zakon dobar i svet, if, if the law is good and holy, promoviše greh i ubija nas, onda nešto tu neštima. And yet it promotes sin and brings death, there's a disconnect here. Something's wrong. To je nasljeđe greha koje je u telu čoveka. That's the um, the inheritance of the, the sin that, that lives within our ne dozvoljava zakonu da ispuni ulogu odnosno mi ne možemo da ispunimo taj sveti zakon. And that sin is actually what prevents the law from actually being accomplished. We cannot fulfill e, tako ćemo se vratiti ponovo na tu temu malo, ali ajde da pomalo analiziramo šta je danas. Danas je Bog zna da nisi samo grešnik. So we'll come back to this theme but today we want to, to look at it from a different perspective and that is that God knows that you are not only a sinner. Not just a sinner. Na latinskom je simul justus, justus et peccator. In Latin you say simul justus et peccator. The same time, just and sinful. U isto vreme i pravedan i grešan. So, at the same time, how can we be both sinners and righteous? How can we be? Nije potential. To je Luterova izjava koja govori u realnosti je ovo, ne, ne potentially, nego u realnosti smo u isto vreme i pravednici i grešnici. This is what Luther uh, touches on when he says not the, that we can potentially be both of these, that we are in reality both sinners and righteous. Sad, ako uđete u subjektivnu psihologiju, malo o sebi razmišljate, ja u isto vreme i pravednih i grešnih, šta to znači? So when, when you look at this from a subjective uh, psychology perspective, what does that mean that I can be both a sinner and a righteous at to the same time? To znači da su psalmi i očajanja i psalmi radosti u isto vreme aktuelni. That means that a psalm can be both a psalm of lament and praise at the same time. A to očajanje je zbog greha. Mi smo u isto vreme i grešnici i pravednici. And this lamentation is because of sin. We are both sinners and righteous. I tako je veza između ove dve teme. Bog zna da si samo grešnik. And that's the connection between these two themes. God knows that you are just a sinner. Ali i da nisi samo grešnik. And yet that you are not just a sinner. Da ima u tebi pravde. That there is righteousness in you. Ali nije od tebe. But it is not from Nego kao što smo sinoć rekli, verom u zajednici s Hristom. But as we said last night, it is through faith that this connection with Christ. I primanje duha Božje koji onda ispunjava pravdu zakona. And receiving the, the, uh, the spirit of God that fulfills the, the law. Dakle, ako imaš veru, imaš duha. So if you have faith, you have the spirit. Ti si pravednik. You are righteous. I tu pravdu ne može niko oduzeti, oduzeti od tebe. And that righteousness nobody can take away from you. Ali u isto vreme svako jutro i svakog dana kad se suočiš sa sobom znaš da si grešnik. And yet every morning when you have to face yourself you realize that you are a sinner. I nije to ni toliko problematično da traje do naše smrti. And that is not even so problematic that it lasts until our death. Ako sačuvamo veru i duha Božeg u nama. If we keep the faith and the spirit of God in us. Danas treba da govorimo o dve najvažnije teme u hrišćanskoj teologiji apostola Pavla. Today we have to talk about the two theological pillars, the most important items in Paul's theology. Prva je u Rimljanima trećoj glavi 21 do 26. The first one is in Romans 3 verses 21 to 26. I pošto je sad bogoslužbeno vreme, nećemo kao studente sinoć pitati ko će da čita, ja ću čitati, ali moramo napraviti poseban naglasak. So since we are at worship, uh, I will read. I won't ask you like last night as students who wants to read. Uh, I will read and I will emphasize 
the, the important items. I taj naglasak je u trećoj glavi na specifičan način gdje on objašnjava da su svi ljudi bez razlike apsolutni grešnici. And, and that emphasis is what Paul makes here in, in uh, chapter 3 when he says that without exception all people are sinners. Ali postoji ono da nisi grešnik. Naglasak sad na pravednosti. But there is also that uh, perspective that you are not just a sinner. 20 i 21. stih, jer se delima zakona nijedno tijelo neće opravdati pred Bogom, kroz zakon dolazi poznanje greha, ali ne samo poznanje intelektualnog poznanja, ono kojom smo sinoć govorili, u svom telu, vidim tu silu. So, uh, what we see here in verse 21 is that we have knowledge of, uh, of uh, the sin. Uh, it is something that we, we face, but it is not. Dobro, nije to toliko ni važno. Okay. Ćemo biti to. We'll come back to it. Da. Uh, on uh, skoro da simultano će prevoditi ako ja pričam brzo. A vidite kako ja svesno sebe sad učim da usporim. Ste primetili u odnosu na sinać. I have to teach myself to intentionally slow down otherwise it's going to be a simultaneous translation. Zato što 3000 puta objasnite nešto studentima, jel? Because when you say something to students 3000 times, i onda neko uzad i i iz zadnje greta dignu profesor, šta mi ono treba da radimo? And then somebody from the back row raises his hand and says, "Teacher, what are we supposed to do?" Onda su profesori ti koji znaju da kontrolišu te frustracije. And professors very quickly learn to to deal with these frustrations. E tako vi me opomenite da pričam sporije. A sad se bez zakona javila pravda Božja posvedočena od zakona i od proroka. But now apart from the law the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. Bez zakona without sin uh, without law. Pravda. Righteousness. To su dva ključna termina ovde. Those are two key uh, pieces here. I u tom tekstu 3:21 26 vratit ćemo se na ovaj slajd posle ovo je struktura u engleskom. And in this text, uh, Ako imate uh, englesku Bibliju, three, ovo je struktura. In this text, the Romans 3:21 to 26, this is the structure that you see here. Kad pogledate text. 21. stih, but now apart from the law, piše gore, jel? Ti možeš uh, pročitati ostatak tog stiha. Um, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. Dakle, imamo dva važna principa, zakon i pravda Božja. So we have two important principles, the law and, and God's righteousness. Ali ja sam mislio da su oni toliko povezani da je pravda ispunjenje zakona. And I thought that these are so tightly linked that uh, righteousness is the fulfillment of the law. A on law. kaže da je pravda ostvarena bez zakona. But actually Paul says that the law is fulfilled without the righteousness, the fulfilled righteousness without the law. is fulfilled without the law. Kako je to moguće? How is that possible? Sećate se juče da sam rekao da je Pavlova teologija autobiografska. You remember that yesterday I said that Paul's uh, theology is, is really an autobiography. To znači da ono što je on doživio promijenilo njegovu teologiju. What he experienced actually uh, changed his theology. On je bio u zakonu u toj pravdi zakona. He was in the law, he was in righteousness through the law. Tako bio u pravdi zakona da je progonio ubio druge zbog toga. He was so deep into the law that he actually persecuted people. Zašto? Why? Zato što ti sektaši da ih nazovemo ondašnjeg vremena because njih, those sectarians let's call them of, the, of those days nisu mogli biti na pravom putu they could not be on the right path jer oni tvrde da je mesija došao bez uslova ispunjenja zakona od strane božjeg naroda because they said that the messiah came without the fulfillment of the law on god's people to ne može jer jevrejsko učenje je bilo mesija stiže kad mi budemo savršeni kad narod ispuni savršeno zakon and that's not possible because jews believed that the messiah would come after people have fulfilled the law. Zato svi ti njihovi reformatori što su bili pre Isusa su u suštini bili jako i nasilni jer su hteli etnički da odvoje jevrejski narod da se oslobode gospodara da mogu tako zakon sačuvati mirno savršen savršeno ga sačuvati. And this is why all the reformers who came before Jesus were so violent because they wanted to cleanse the people of, of God so that they could achieve this righteousness in order for the Messiah to be able to come. Zvuči poznato iz vesti možda danas? Does that sound familiar from the news today? Šta je poenta otklanjanja drugih? What's the point of cleansing of pushing those other people? Ako nije away? religijski naglasak na zakonu, na hramu, if it's not a, a, a religious emphasis on the law, on the temple, i to je još uvijek popularno u nekoj novoj formi, u nekoj globalnoj i strašno novoj formi, ali još uvijek je popularno to učenje. 
And we see that this, this teaching is still popular in a global form. It's in a different form, but it is very much the same teaching. A Pavle, kad je sustreo vaskrslo Hrista na putu za Damaska, mu se svetlo javilo. And when Paul met Jesus on the path, on the road to Damascus, on je bio tri dana slep, he was blind for three days, i za ta tri dana razmišljao da li je moguće da je Mesija došao bez zakona. He was thinking for three days, is it possible that the Messiah came without the law being fulfilled? Da li je moguće da Isus iz Nazareta Mesija iako nismo ispunili zakon kao Izrael? Is it possible that Jesus is the Messiah since we have not yet fulfilled the law? Pogodite komu je pomogao da razume te stvari. Guess who helped him understand these things? Kad si slep, ko ti pomože? When you're blind, who's helping you? Duh je bio toliko ga ispunio. He was so filled by the Spirit. On nije video, dakle nije bio distracted, nije mogao da bude opterećen drugim stvarima. He was not distracted, he was not burdened by what his eyes were seeing. I tri dana i tri noći samo o tome razmišljao. And for three days and three nights, that's all he thought about. Zamislite taj stres kad ste videli, a sad ne možete da vidite, slepilo. Imagine the stress that you could see fine and all of a sudden you can't see anything anymore. A u isto vreme dobio mir. And yet at the same time he had peace now. Zato što je duh s njim objašnjava mu ovu stvar. Bez zakona pravda Hristova, to je tamo u centru, pogledajte. 24. stih. Because the Spirit was explaining these things to him, how to achieve righteousness without the fulfillment of the law. Opravda će se zabadava blagodaću otkupom Hrista. All are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Kojega je Bog postavio da bude očišćenje verom u krvi njegovoj? God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of His blood. Da pokaže svoju pravdu oproštenjem predjašnjih greha. To be received by faith. Nešto o pravdi ovdje malo. Something about righteousness. Nije ovo zakonski termin. Ovo je duhovni, spasonosni termin. Pravda spasava. This is not a legal terminology. This is a spiritual terminology. Obično pravda uključuje kaznu. Naravno, Mesija je kažnjen, ali mi smo oslobođeni kazne. Dakle, tu je spasonosni element. Righteousness usually carries with it a sentence of that normally we should endure, but not in this case. I nigde na sudu danas ne možete nevinog člana familije da pitate, sudi, ali bi ti hteo 40 godina da služiš umestu tvojeg kriminalca u familiji, tvojeg rođenog? When you have a lawsuit today, you cannot ask the judge, judge, are you prepared to serve that sentence of 40 years instead of this person who is guilty? Da, judge ili bilo ko ko je innocent u court. A judge or anybody else, an innocent person who is just attending. Zato je Božja pravda malo drugačija od ljudske pravde. And this is why God's righteousness is different than human righteousness. Mi kroz večnost nećemo razumeti kako je nevini i to sa božanskom prirodom uspeo da ispuni pravdu tako što je žrtvon za krivog. Throughout eternity we will not be able to understand how is it possible that an innocent person could justify through their sacrifice somebody who was guilty of sin. Samo mi recite gde je tu pravda. Where is the justice in this? Tu nema pravde. There is no justice. Sa ljudske tačke gledaš. From a human perspective. Ali božanska pravda je božanska pravednost. Imamo i mi razliku. Pravda i pravednost. U engleskom ima šta? Justice i righteousness. Tako? But God's justice enables righteousness through the shedding of innocent blood. Tako je. Dakle, Božja pravda je pravednost. Righteousness. So God's justice is righteousness. I ta pravda se obistinila na jedan vrlo specifičan način u odnosu na stare zavet. And this righteousness manifested itself in a very unusual way. Ovde nisam uspeo danas da stavim taj slajd, ali hteo sam da stavim pa sam zaboravio. U starom zavetu imate kopčak zaveta. Sećate se. In the Old Testament you have the Ark of the Covenant, you remember? Ovde kaže da je Bog stavio Hrista da bude očišćenje. Here it says that God put Christ to be the cleansing. To je jako daleko od originalnog značenja. Jako daleko. That's very far from the original meaning. Originalno značenje je da je Bog postavio Hrista da bude poklopac na tom kovčegu. In the original meaning, God used Christ to become the cover on that Ark of the Covenant. E, taj se cover zove Hilasterion na grčkom. That cover is called Hilasterion in Greek. Koji je služio kao pomirilište između Boga i čoveka who was serving to actually pomirilište mesto mira. Atonement. Atonement, thank you. That cover was supposed to be the atonement between God's people and God. E, i kada je Hristos umro na krstu, gde je sada atonement? Gde je taj cover? Gde je taj poklopac? And when Christ died on the cross, where is now this cover? To je krst. It's the cross. I ono što je jako važno 
jeste da postoje tradicionalne crkve neke koje obožavaju krst kao krst. Znate to. Ovdje je poziv da se obožava žrtva na krstu, ne sam objekat, nego Hristosa krsta. Ovdje je poziv da se obožava žrtva the sacrifice not the cross but the sacrifice i to je bilo cross. najviše korišteno u prvih nekoliko vekova hrišćanstva da ismeju hrišćane and, and that image was actually used to mock christians in the first century obožavati nekog ko je umro na krstu bilo je ludilo u tim vekovima znači u prvom veku it was insanity to be worshiping somebody who was crucified who died on the cross nema ništa tu duhovno za ljude ništa privlačno there nije is bilo nothing spiritual or attractive in in this picture ali ko je čito malo se to agintu i stari zavet se to je prevod grčki sa jevrejskog starog zaveta but for those who read the septuagint the translation in greek of the Old Testament. Oni su lupili uh, rukom o, o glavu što se kaže i rekli Bog je njega učinio da bude Hilasterion. They hit their forehead and said God made Christ to become the Hilasterion. Pa dakle ona, onaj prvi proces je završen, evo novog, novog zaveta. So the first part of the process is finished. This is now a new part. I taj part, taj novi deo je verom u Hristu blagodat kroz pravdu, bez zakona, bez uslova zakona. Do, ovdje treba jedan bracket staviti, staviti bez uslova ispunjenja zakona. So this new part now is believing in Christ's righteousness without the fulfillment of the law as a prerequisite. Šta to znači? What does that mean? Kad sam jednom kao pastor učestvovao u obraćenju jedne osobe, When I participated to the conversion of a person as a pastor, i ta osoba je dolazila stalno s Biblijom od crkve, smo stalno proučavali, imala je svoju Bibliju. This person would always bring the, the Bible to church because we were always studying together. I uvek je nosila Bibliju nekako bliže srcu kao. And this person was always carrying their Bible very close to their heart. Rekli biste zaista osoba zna obraćena i tako dalje. You would say that this is a truly converted person. I ako biste pitali osobu da li se sprema za krštenje sad nakon svih lekcija, Uh, you, nakon svega onoga što sad radim sa studentima pet puta ponavljanja i tako dalje. And if you were to ask that person if they're ready for baptism after all the studying that we have done together really really looking deeply into some of these topics. I osoba kaže da. And the person said yes. Svinjetina out. Subotu, meat, out. subotu super sam počeo da svetkom. I'm uh, worshiping on the Sabbath. Kafa, ništa. No coffee. Duvan, ništa. No smoking. Zamisli, pastore. Imagine that, pastor. I to je uslov za krštenje, ja ga pitam. And you think that that's the condition for uh, baptism. A on jadan kaže. And he sadly says. Jadan, jadno, jadan, jadan kaže. Pa šta drugo? Well, and he says, what else? Šta drugo? What else? A ja još jadniji i ne znam šta da mu odgovorim. And, and I feel even sadder and I don't know what to answer him. Ja mu kažem, o, o, mi smo spremni za ulazom u bazen, a nismo. Now, what do we say now? Problem. We thought we were ready for the baptism, but we're not. To je to uslov uspunjavanja zakona. I crkva će neka staviti amin na to, reći, dobro, uklopio se, moš. That's this condition of fulfillment Ništa se tu of niko nije uklopio. And the, to je daleko od uklapanja. <laughs> and the, sometimes churches will say, well, it's okay, it'll come together at da. some point, but no, we're, we're very far from... You know, this coming Ali together. to je ta forma, ta ograda koju mi volimo da podignemo. I onda smo drugačiji. And now we're different. E kad smo drugačiji, sigurno smo Boži. And therefore, if we're we must be godly. Ko kaže da ako si drugačiji, da si sigurno Boži? Who says that just because you're different that you are godly? Boži si kad si Hristov, a ne kad si drugačiji. When you are of Christ, then you are God. E a Pavlova teologija kaže svima sam sve bio da kako god svakog spasem. And Paul says I was everything to everybody just so I could save everybody. I ako tvoj prijatelj koji nije deo crkve, koji je van crkve kaže dođi kod mene na večeru. And if your friend who is not in the church says come over for dinner. I tamo stoji pola čaše vina i svinski steak, ovaj šnicla. And, and if there's half a glass of wine and uh, some uh, a pig uh, meat there. I ti tamo pomisliš e kad bi ovaj čovjek postao Hristov. And I thought ah, if only this man could become Christ's. A on kaže ako ne pojedeš ne popiješ nisi mi prijatelj. And he says to me if you don't eat and drink with me you're not my friend. Pastore, prepone subota, nemoj ta teška pitanja. <laughs> Pastor, don't raise those difficult nemoj, questions. Nemoj, smo on došli da, morning. Tu, nismo došli da baš toliko duboko razmišljamo. <laughs> We haven't come to dig that deep quite. Etičko teološko pitanje, duhovno pitanje, strašno pitanje. So, Realno. Ethical, 
spiritual question, but very real question. Ja imam drugove koji nisu adventisti, igramo taj basket, dokle ćemo vidjet ćemo. Ima i 60 plus igraju s nama i 50 i 40. I have friends who are not adventists and we play basketball together. It goes into their 40s, 50s, I, and 60s. I piju pivo posle. And afterwards they all go to drink a beer. Ja idem s njima. And I go with them. I pijem svoj ginger ale, znaš ovaki, samo ginger ale. And I drink a ginger ale, Zoran knows. I ovi kažu, a, ti ljudi što igraju sa mnom a, basket, kažu, daj, daj Aleksu taj pitcher of ginger ale već jednom. Već znaju šta, šta ja pijem. And, and those friends, they already know, so they say, yeah, get, get Alex that pitcher of ginger ale. Ali šta bi se desilo? But what would happen? Ako bi Alex jednog dana srknuo malo piva, if Alex one day said, I can have a beer, i vi ste bili svedoci svemu tome, and you witnessed all of this, kako biste se osjećali? What would you think? Etičko, duhovno, Ethically, kontekstualno pitanje. And contextually. To se nikad neće desiti, ali se ja nekad mislim šta bi bilo kad bi se desilo. I wonder Ko- what would happen if, if that was Koliko je ta ograda forme zakona jaka? To, to, je, to je pitanje. How strong is that fence that form based on the law koja, that bi, koja je bitna za zdravlje za duhovnost za večni život ne kažem da to nije sve važno this fence is, is important it has value for ali pitanje health. da li je najvažnije to je pitanje but the question is is that the most important item naravno idemo dalje druga korinćanima kad je reč o svetu druga korinćanima 5 18 do 20 isto iz Paulove teologije malo jedna poslanica koja je malo problematična let's look at the second corinthians uh, uh, chapter 5 Verses 18 to 20. Zovu je problematična, a koriste je za pomirenja u crkvi. Druga Korinćanima je super tekst da čitate kad su svađe u crkvi i kad su problemi. This is a problematic text and, and it's a great text to read when there's a strife in the church, when there's problems. Zato što on ovdje govori o miru, o pomirenju. Ali Because sve this... od Boga i koji pomeri nas sa sobom kroz Hrista i dade nam službu pomirenja, jer Bog beše u Hristu i svet pomeri sa sobom, ne primivši im greha njihovih, metnuvši u nas reč pomirenja. All of this, uh, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Da. That God was reconciling the, word, the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. Crkva, evo, religijski svet, religijski svet, šta god je tu drugi. So we see here the religious Druga, world, drugi the church, krug i treći svet, svet uopšte. And the world at large. Za koga je Hristus umro ovdje i s kim se Bog pomirio? S crkvom, izabranima? For whom did Christ die and re- with whom did he... Sa relativno religijskim ljudima koji poznaju ko je Bog ili za ceo svet. So he was reconciled with the church, with the... Za ceo svet. The religious world or the whole world? Jeste sigurni? Whole world, e, ako sure? je to tako, ako je pomirenje između Boga i celog sveta... If this reconciliation is between God and the whole world, onda je Bog sebe pomirio već sa svim katolicima. Then God has already been reconciled with all the Catholics. Uzu sam tu grupu zato što nam je to najomiljenije u adventizmu. I've picked that group because they're the, the preferred ones in e, adventism. Da li je Bog umro za sve te ljude? Pitam se. Did Christ die for all these people? To wonder? znači da je on već pomirio sebe sa svima. That means that he has already been reconciled with all. Ako sam ja onda da ih mrzim, kad se Bog već pomirio sa svima. So who am I to hate them if God is already reconciled with them? A za, zašto se već pomirio? Pa zato što je umro na krstu pre nego što su oni tražili spasenje. So how is he already reconciled because Christ already died on Ko ste the cross? vi bili pre nego što su upoznali Krista? Isto, isto, svi mi ovdje. Just like all of us, uh, Christ already died before we were Dakle to da Pavle uči da je Bog sebe pomirio sa celim svetom. To je dalo silu njegove misiji. So the fact that Paul was teaching that Christ was reconciled to the entire world is what gave power to his mission. I u Atini, i u Rimu, on svima priča, kaže, Bog se već sa vama pomirio, samo da ga upoznate, samo da vidite kolika je to ljubav. To je sve. In Athens, in Rome, Paul is preaching, God has already been reconciled to you guys because Christ has died on the cross. Na kraju imate pobedu nad silama zla i super pobeda zbog ljubavi. Šta je krst? opravdanje, pomirenje i super pobjeda nad silama zla. So what is the cross? The cross is victory over sin. Koliko od vas je iskusilo silu sila zla u životu? How many of you have experienced the power of sin? Na vašoj sopstvenoj koži. On your own skin. Koliko onda više cenimo ovaj treći razlog? So how much do we uh, cherish this third reason? Kad se okreneš ka krstu. Kad when, pogledaš na Golgotu. When you look at the cross at Golgotha 
ti sve sile zla odjednom prestanu biti sile. All these powers of sin lose their power. Zar je to pobjeda nad Sotonom, ta smrt tog čoveka? Kako je Bog to uradio? How did Christ achieve this victory over Satan? Zato što je jednostavno pokazao neshvatljivu ljubav za ceo kosmos, za ceo univerzum. Because he showed this love that's incomprehensible for all the universe. E, zato se koristi grčka reč super pobjeda, a ne pobjeda. And that's why in, in the Greek it's, it's actually called a super victory, not just a victory. Super Hyper victory. Zašto? Zato why? što sada kroz stradanje, kroz iskustva, kroz probleme, Pavle kaže mi smo super pobednici, opet. Ništa ne može da pobedi Hrista na krstu, odnosno veru u Hrista. Because despite the tribulations, the problems, da. Paul says we have this hyper victory that cannot be taken away. I frustracije sila zla koja hoće da vas unište, a posle izađete iz krize vi još jači. And and these powers of sin of evil are frustrated, but when you come out through them, you're even stronger. I onda oni moraju još jače iskušenja da smišljaju. And so they have to Preveliki think up. Preveliki ste problem njima. They have to think up even even greater temptations. You've become such a big problem da, da, for them. Da bi vas đavo uništio, on mora da smišlja nove planove. Čudne planove smišlja i nove, ali kad se vratiš krstu dobiješ tu silu koja je na svim silama, jer je Hristos super pobednik. Satan has to keep thinking, you know, more and more powerful temptations, but every time you come back to the cross, you are strengthened even more. Evangelje po apostolu Pavlu, ne po Luci, ne po Jovanu ovde. That's according to Paul. It's not Luke's or, or, or John's uh, gospel. Sve to Biblija, ali ovde ima specifičan naglasak. This is a special emphasis that Paul has. Šta on veruje o vaskrsenju? What does Paul believe about uh, resurrection? Prvo ono što moram da kažem jako važno. The first thing that I have to say that's very important. A to nas neće ni malo iznenaditi, ali možda je podložno malo debati. It, it probably won't surprise you, but it's important to emphasize. Da li je hrišćanstvo ideja? Is Christianity an idea? Ili je to vezano za realnost? Or is it tied to reality? Ako odete u platonizam i dođete na moj predmet istorije filozofije, učimo Platona, on kaže pa to je isto. If you go to Plato, he'll say it's the same. Ideja je realnost, realnost je ideja ili Hegela filozof. To je za njih idea, isto. An idea is also reality, reality Ali u principu, u normalnom procesu razmišljanja, but in a normal way of thinking, mi imamo ideju o sebi, ideju o Bogu, ideju o svetu, a postoji realnost Boga, realnost mene i realnost sveta. We have an idea about ourselves, about the world, about God. I o tome smo na pouci govorili što se novo dotako psihologije malo. But there's also reality about all of these and Novo talked about this during our lesson. Da li je Isus vaskrso iz mrtvih u našoj glavi samo? Did uh, Christ resurrect from the dead only in our mind? Ili on vaskrso u realnosti? Or did he resurrect in reality? Da li kad odete bili ste u Getsemani u Izraelu ako ste bili uđete u grobnicu vidite stvarno prazan grob? If you go to Getsemane today in Israel, you will see a truly empty tomb. Velika verovatnoća da je tu bilo, možda nije 100%, ali to je. Very likely that Christ was there, it may not be 100%. Prvo pitanje koje se nameće nekom ko predaje filozofiju i teologiju i etiku je, wow, ovo nije samo ideja. The first thing that hits you, especially when you're teaching these topics is, wow, this was not just an idea. Jer tamo neki što sposlu učili demitologizaciju, Bultmani, tamo neki Nemci, jako pametni, ali malo čudni ljudi. Because some Germans, uh, a little strange, but okay, I mean, who studied this? Učili su da se učenicima sve to zbilo u glavi. They taught that all of this was just in the head, in the mind jedan veliki of the disciples. Mit, jedan veliki mit je osvojio ih je uzbudio ih je i taj mit da mi hoćemo da živimo, da budemo besmrtni, počeli odjednom da veruju da, da je Isus besmrtan. I they oni were, da su besmrtni. They were moved by this myth that we want to live forever and Christ is the path to that, but it was all a myth in the end. E pa to može da traje do onog trenutka dok se vi sa Hristom ne susreti, susretnete u realnosti. That can go on until you meet and face Christ in reality. Jel shvatate da susret za Hristom u realnosti je opipljiv koliko i vaša ruka, koža, sada i realnost, ova tu što smo mi, naša realnost? Because that's when you realize that this meeting with Christ is as tangible as your skin, ako, as you yourself. Are. Tako je. Ako nema tog susreta u realnosti, ideja ne može puno da pomogne. If that meeting doesn't happen in reality, that idea will stop short. E pa prva stvar koju on hoće da poveže sa starozavetnom teologijom je da je Isus ustao kao sin Boži. So the first thing that Paul wants to emphasize Is jako zanimljiv stih u Rimljanima, prvi stihovi, jako uh, sažet, sažeto verovanje. Let's look at Romans 1. 
where Christ arose as the Son of God. Jeste u četvrtom stihu. Verse 4. Posvedočen silno za Sina Božeg Duhom Svetim po vaskrsenju iz mrtvih. And who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead. Ko zna dobro biblijsku teologiju kaže stoj pa ja pa sin Boži je bio i pre vas kreza, ne? Well, somebody who knows theology will say but wait, wasn't Christ the son of God before resurrection? Otkud sad vaskrsenje da svedoči da je on sin Boži? So how is the resurrection now testifying that he was the son of God? To pokazuje koliko mi ne razumemo važnost tog čina, tog vaskrsenja. That shows that we don't understand the importance of this fact of resurrection. Mi smo uvijek u čemu je razlika? We were always thinking, he's always been the son of God. Kad je on načinjen sinom Božim? When did he become the son of God? Ima nekoliko elemenata da možda po rođenju ili pre u večnosti, ali ovdje kaže po vaskrsenju. We have some elements that say, well, from birth already he was the son of God, but here Paul says resurrection testifies to him being the son of God. Tako je, ili možemo da kažemo po vaskrsenju je postao specifičan profil Sina Božeg. We can say that upon resurrection he took on a specific profile as the son of God. Dobro, da malo požurimo s ovim stihovima. Prva Korinčanima 15.21 imamo a otkrivenje novog čoveka, čoveka po novom Adamu ili novog Adama ili posljednjeg Adama. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 15, 21. 21, samo ti možeš pročiti. Verse 21, where Christ is made alike to the first Adam. And verse 21 says, For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. Iako je došlo smrt kroz čoveka, vaskrsenje isto dolazi kroz koga? Isto kroz čoveka. Dakle, taj drugi čovek je drugi Adam. Just like sin came through men, the resurrection also comes through men, Christ as the second Adam, as we see in verse 22. Ako je on u vaskrsenju postao novi čovek, if he became a new man through resurrection, Ako je postao nova funkcija Sina Božjega, if he became a new function of the Son of God, pa onda je sve u njemu. Then everything is in him. Sve što je važno Bogu i čoveku, onda je u njemu. Everything that's important for man is in Christ. Omašiti taj centar svemira koji je Hristos i Sin Božji i drugi Adam, to znači omanuti, omašuti celo hrišćanstvo, nema hrišćanstva. So, missing this concept means missing the entire Christianity. There's no Christianity if we miss this piece. Osim toga, osim svega toga, u Filipljanima 2, besides all this, in Filipjans 2, 6 do 11, 6 to 11, kaže da je on Kyrios na grčkom. It says that he is Kyrios in Greek. A to Kyrios šta znači? What does that mean, Kyrios? Da li neko zna šta znači Kyrios ili Kurios? Zovemo ga titulom gospod. Znači, po vas krsenju iz mrtvih je postao gospod. I opet se pitamo, pa zar nije bio gospod pre? So, what this says is that upon resurrection he became the Lord. Zar je vas krsenje toliko važno da je Mesiju učinilo sinom Božim, drugim Adamom i gospodom? Wasn't he the Lord already even before resurrection? Here Paul says that in resurrection he became the son of God, the second Adam and the Lord. I šta je taj gospodar? To je gospodar, gospodar koji sve poseduje. And what is that Lord? It's, it's a Lord who owns everything. To pokazuje da naš život u celosti je njegovo posjedovanje. On te poseduje. It means that our living, our, our very selves, are his property. He to, owns to, everything, to including ourselves. Pokazuje da smo otkupljeni, da više sebi ne pripadamo, mi potpuno pripadamo njemu. To je to. We have been redeemed. We don't own ourselves anymore. He owns us. I onda kad ja postavim sebe pitanje koji ću posao raditi, u koji ću grad ići, s kim ću se ženiti, koliko deca ću imati i tako dalje. Jesu su to važna pitanja za Boga? Prvo, jesu to važna pitanja za vas ako je reč o vašoj deci? I te je kako krucijalno važno, pa mi živimo za tu decu, za šta mi živimo? Nego da u novu generaciju utkamo taj duh tako i Bog, on živi za svoju decu, on hoće da nam pomogne, ali mi ga ne činimo gospodarem, mi ga činimo manjim gospodarem nego što jeste i tu je problem. As parents we live for our kids, we want to to transfer that knowledge of God to them. Ako je Bog gospodar, ako je Bog gospodar, on je gospodar svega što si ti, sve što odlučuješ, sve što radiš, sve što imaš je njegovo. If God is Lord, then he is the Lord of everything, including yourself. Kažu neki moji studenti kad smo razgovarali o tome da li mogu večeras da idu na neku proslavu, bila je neka proslava ili neko predavanje, ne sjećam se tačno šta je bila funkcija. I had some students who were asking, can we go to this party? There was some party going on. 
Kaže, nemam auto, student. And one student says, I don't have a car. Ja kažem, imam ja, uzmi moj. So I say, well, I have a car, you can have mine. Ono, oni Amerikanci čudesno se čude. And the, these American students were surprised. Čemu ovaj govori? Ovo je komunista, njega treba izbaciti iz, iz zemlje. <laughs> What's this guy talking about? He's a communist. Ovo je pro-komunist. him out. Nisam komunista, nego I'm sve što je moje i tvoje, zato što je sve Božije, nije moje uopšte. But everything that's mine is yours because it's all the Lord's anyway. Šta ti treba? Evo ti. What do you need? Here. Čak Isus kaže, šta ti treba? Evo ti. Ne traži nikad nazad, kaže Isus. When, when Jesus says, what do you need? Here it is. Ako razbi he never auto, asks for it back. Ako razbi auto, ko što je moja čerka nedavno izgrebala. Ovaj. And if, if they smash your car, my <laughs> daughter scratched the car. Onda je to ok, zato što to nije tvoje. Ti nisi toliko uzbuđen kad nije tvoje. Niče mi se uzbuđen. Because it's not yours anyway. So what are you Život getting so emotional tvoj. about? I metak nije tvoj, deca nisu tvoja. Ništa nije tvoje samo. Your life's not yours, your property is not yours, your kids are not yours. Nothing is just yours. E, to je Kyrios, Gospod Kyrios. To, to je vera u Kyrios. That's the Kyrios Lord. Osim Sponsor. toga, osim toga, uh, ne znam koliko još malo vremena imamo, ali ovo je carska titula, Kyrios kao car, odnosno kao Cezar. And we also see Kyrios as ah. king, as Caesar. Novi Cezar, Rimska imperija, olala. A new Caesar, new Roman emperor. Uf. Znači, on rođen kao beba u štali u Vitlemu, za koji rimljani nikad nisu čuli za to mesto. So he was born in a stable, of, and the Romans never heard of that place. Odrastu u Nazaretu, tako bili smo tamo malo mesto, ništa, jadi beda, malo, ništa. He grew up in this miserable little place called da. Nazareth. Da, možda je bio Seforis, možda je išao u Amfitatari, Isus u Seforis je bio veliki grad, malo gledaju yeah. gladijatore i konje, možda su išao, možda i nisu. Ali to, to je tako mali gradić. It's such a tiny, t- a tiny place. Maybe Jesus went to a neighboring town to, to see something bigger, but Nazareth is such a small place. I sad se hrišćani razmilili po Rimskoj imperiji i kaže, naš Kirio se novi Cezar. And now the Christians have spread out throughout the Roman Empire and they say, Christ is our new Lord, our new Caesar. I, i, I kad javite to administraciji i vlastima, šta and, se dešava? And when you announce this to the authorities, what happens? Progonstvo, zato su prvi hrišćani bili proganjani. Persecution, and that's why the first Christians were persecuted. Šta kažu ove posle Covid-a, menja se svet. What do they say after U kom COVID? smislu? Steže se obruč. New world order. Zašto se steže obruč? Zato što Cezar hoće da ima potpunu kontrolu. Conditions Cezar. are tightening more and more. Why? Because Caesar wants full control. To vodi u globalni fašizam da će antihrist biti zamo to učenje. E sad, ako je to tako, fascism. mi izađemo i kažemo Hristos je jedini Cezar. And, and we find ourselves there and we say no, no, Christ is the only Caesar. I onda mi neko kaže hrišćanstvo nije politička poruka. And then somebody tells me uh, Christianity is not a political movement. Pa nema ništa više političko od toga. There, there's nothing more political than Christianity. Kad ja kažem nisi mi ti Cezar, Hristos je moj Cezar. When I say you're not my Caesar, Christ is my Caesar. Rezultat je bio drastičan, tako će biti i na kraju. I mi to znamo zašto. The results were quite drastic and that's how we'll be in the end and we know I why. I na kraju malo neobično u prvoj korinćanima 15 Hristos je vaskrsao uh, u telu, a kaže da je životodavni duh postao. And in 1 Corinthians 15 it says that Christ was resurrected in the flesh. Ali duh je šta postao? Postao je on životodavni duh, life-giving Aha, spirit. But he became life-giving spirit as well. E sad se postavlja pitanje da li je Hristos sada duh ili je telo? And now the question is is Christ in spirit or, or in flesh? On je duhovno telo, on je he telo. Is, he is a, a spirit in the flesh. Ali je i duh. And obviously spirit. I to božanski duh. And, and a godly spirit koji je svuda Divine, prisutan. To je everywhere. paradoks Hristovog prisustva. On je u telu svuda prisutan, jer je duh. And that's the, the paradox of Jesus. He is everywhere because he Znate is in the spirit. Znate ono učenje, on ne može da bude svuda, pa poslu zamenika Duha Svetog da bi mogao biti svuda. Znate to? You, you've heard that teaching that Christ cannot be everywhere now, so he is sending his spirit because he can no longer be to zvuči omnipresent. Kao, to zvuči kao u trojstvu, ja ne mogu nešto da uraj, maj ti mi pomozi. It sounds like in the Trinity, they're kind of to, saying, well, I can't do this, can you help me out? To se čak ravna sa jeresi. Sa, sa. And, and that, that's like a heresy. Heretic. Hristos u telu može da bude svuda. Christ in the flesh can be everywhere. Za razliku od nas, zato što je životodavni duh, on nije samo telo. Which is very different from us and why because Christ is a spirit. Kad znamo šta je Pavle propovedao, Hristos umro, Hristos vaskrsao, Hristos proslavljen kao Mesija. When you know what Paul preached, Christ in the flesh, Christ uh, Christ oh, Hristos uh, resurrected. I, I tamo imate Lord piše to je Kyrios, gospodar. 
Onda se postaje pitanje šta je sledeća faza njihovog propovedanja bila. Dobro, izađem ja u javnost, mi izađemo i govorimo ovo o Hristu, raspetom Hristova. Šta je sledeća faza? Primanje duha i stvaranje zajednice. Taj duh životodavni Hristos je hrišćanska crkva, zajednica hrišćanske crkve je zasnovana na tom duhu. Duh, novi duh. The Christian church is founded on this new spirit. A tvoj odgovor na to response piše jel, je vera i obraćenje. And your answer to this is faith and um, conversion. Samo da vam kažem, prva prva se ima tri sekcije tamo, al tako. So there's three sections there. Prva sekcija Paulova teologija ko je Hristos. To je jasno, to smo rekli. The first section is Paul's theology who is Jesus Christ. Drugo šta su pa, apostoli isto propovedali, isto važno, druga sekcija, da kad siđe duh, on stvara specifičnu uh, zajednicu koja se zove Sveta crkva. Crkva. Ali još uvijek se traži naš odgovor. But the, our answer is still expected. I na jednu realnost i na drugu, i na hrišćan, Hristovu realnost i na hrišćansku crkvi. Our answer to the reality of Christ but also the reality of his church. Zašto? Zato što je telo Hristovo na zemlji crkva, ovo telo je isto i crkva. Because on earth the body of Christ is the church. I ti ne možeš da kažeš ja sam vezan za glavu, ali nisam za telo Hristovo. And so you can't say well I'm tied to the head but I don't care for dakle, the body of Christ. Dakle, odluku koju ćeš danas na osnovu ovog što vam ja prezentujem ovde so today, je vera u Hrista, bezuslovna vera, is faith in Christ without condition, obraćenje, promjena tvog životnog usmerenja, conversion and the change in your life's direction. A to isto znači primanje novog duha i biti u zajednici tog novog duha. And that implies receiving a new spirit and being in this community of faith. Tako da na žalost ili na sreću, ne znam šta da mislim. And so whether it's whether you see this as good news or not, I'm not sure what to think here. Ovaj model se izgubio danas u crkvi. This model was lost in the church today. I mnoge crkve izgledaju ka, samo kao društveni šta? klubovi za druženje, razmenjujemo recepte za sa origanom ili bez šta ono soja i šta li već tofu. And, and because of that many da. churches have become uh, social clubs where we exchange recipes. I sve to dobro. Tofu. To, to je okay, ja volim tofu. And, and that's good. I like tofu. I origano volim. To. To, to je sve dobro. This Ali to good. nije suština zašto smo mi tu i ko smo mi. Ni not... ko smo ni zašto šta u kom pravcu delujemo. But that's not the essence of who we are and why we are here. Jer Hristos na krstu, ako ti se nije otkrio, onda je stvarno vaskrsli Hristos besmislenost za ljude. Dakle, to ide u jedno. Hristos raspeti je i vaskrsli. I kad ti se Hristos vaskrsli otkrio, to je u ličnom iskustvu, ja se nemam vremena za moje iskustvo, ne mogu da govorim kao studentima. Da kad prođeš tu veru u Hrista, onda dolazi Duh Sveti u silini i stvara, vodite u zajednicu da budeš deo tela Hristova. So when you go through that phase of of uh, building the faith in Jesus and then receiving the Holy Spirit. Ja lično verujem da Bog vodi ljude u različite zajednice. Nekoga vodi u adventističku, nekoga u neku drugu. A možda će onoj drugoj porasti dovoljno da dođe u adventističku. A možda nikad neće doći u adventističku. Dakle ne možemo biti kao istorijski uh, ograničeni onim ogradama o kojima sam govorio. I believe that uh, God's spirit leads some people to the Adventist church but some other people to a different da. church and maybe in time they will come to the Adventist church but we cannot look at the historical Adventist church as somehow the fenced off area that is the only uh, the divine place of, of godly people. Bilo bi jako arogantno. That would be very arrogant. Tvrditi da je Bog samo sa nama. To, to claim that God is with us only and zar, nobody else. Zar nije to glavna prepreka bila kod jevrijskog naroda? Hasn't that been the precise issue with the people the Zar ćemo mi, people? zar ćemo mi sad u realnosti, ne u ideji, nego u realnosti da promašimo tačno tamo gdje su oni promašili. Are we going to fail again exactly where they failed by building this barrier? Borimo se protiv toga. We need to fight this. A to znači biti s ljudima napolju. And that means being with the, the people Slušati, outside. Čuti, pomoći Uh, voditi ih ka zajednici ja nisam pro, uh, imate duha sveta koji vodi njih ka zajednici ali ste vi izašli napolje centri fugalno napolje that means listening helping uh, bringing people to this community to je vrlo kratki prevod ovo što sam rekao 
Ali, but, okay. but being outside je, among the people. Super, da, da. <laughs> ovaj, na kraju, naša odluka danas, and in the end, our decision today, Sećate se da smo na pouci proučavali čekaj na gospoda, tamo nema puno vere, ali kod Pavlove teologije je vera, 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 faith. Sve se svodi na veru. You remember that we studied in Psalms waiting on God, but with Paul it's faith, 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 everything is about faith. Koja vodi ka promeni. That leads to a change. E, tu je ono pomirenje Jakova i Pavla. This is where the, the reconciliation is, is da, very important. Tu Jakov kaže ako nema promjene nema ni vere. This is where uh, James says if there's no change then there's no faith. I na kraju služba ljubavi noću više mladima na engleskom svetom jeziku govoriti popodne. And, and the last piece is, is uh, uh, service through, uh, through love and I'll talk to young people more da, about this. Da engleski najlakši jezik In English. Za, za to je global. <laughs> popodne ćemo govoriti o službi ljubavi i o stradanju za Hrista, ali za sad u ovoj temi, broj dva, zapamtimo, dar vere vodi ka promeni. So, this afternoon we'll talk more about service through love, but for today, remember, um, dar vere vodi ka ovom obraćenju ka promeni. So, the gift of faith leads to conversion. A vere nema bez krsta, vaskrsenja i duha svetoga, i zajednice. And there is no faith without the, without the cross, without the resurrection and the Holy Spirit. Ponekad mi protestanti zapostajemo to. Sveti Hristos na krstu. Sometimes we, uh, as Protestants, we forget this. Christ on the cross. Sveti vaskrsli gospod. The holy resurrection. I onda sveta crkva Božja. And the holy church of God. Protestanti više idu na tendenciju da to bude zajednički socijalni klub. Protestants sometimes have a tendency to make it more of a social club. Tako da mistika svete crkve se malo izgubi. So we lose the, the meaning, the sense of the church. Ta, taj duboki smisao koji ni ne razumemo potpuno. This, this deep uh, purpose that we don't even quite fully understand. Što ja moram da budem deo crkve? Why, Danas why mladi pitaju, zašto? Young people especially today ask, why do I have to be part of a church? Pa zato što je sveta, crkva je sveta. Because it's holy, the church is holy. Toliko problema, toliko korupcije, toliko svega i svačega. So many problems, so much corruption. E pa zato što nismo čitali Pavla. Because we haven't read Paul. Svaka poslanica, masa problema. In every gospel, a letter of Paul, there's a, a flurry of problems. A on ne odustaje da crkvu zove kako? Svetom crkvu. But Paul doesn't give up calling the church holy. Church. Zašto? Why? Zato što je tu poziv i sveti poziv određuje tvoj identitet. Boži poziv da budeš svet. Because there's a holy calling of God that defines your identity. 